All right, here we are. This is the first time I think that this has actually gone exactly the way I want it to. Now I have to mute everything. Woo! How are we all tonight? I have been in here for a while messing around and, uh, and I'm excited. I'm excited about tonight because we've got a whole bunch of stuff to talk about here tonight. But the first thing I have to do is I have to take off the chat because if I don't, then I am going to probably lose my mind. My camera's a little bit crooked, so I gotta make sure that's all straightened up. How is everyone doing tonight? My chair is extra squeaky tonight. Hopefully that doesn't become a huge problem, but I'm excited to get right into it today. I'm not gonna explain everything to everyone like I did last week. I'm just gonna get right into it, but I am gonna remind you that if you are one of those wild and crazy people that decides to give a super chat, I'm not asking you to do it, but if you do that, I will absolutely shout you out at the end of the stream tonight. I'm gonna to do that every single week. There's no way anybody's gonna ever put money in my pocket and I'm not going to shout them out for it at the end. But other than that, I'm not gonna be addressing the chat because my brain just won't let me do it. So, mm, I'm gonna try something tonight that will hopefully work because if it doesn't, I, I just don't know how I'm gonna do this. But we're gonna start off tonight with what's going on. That's the first segment we do every single week uh, before we get into the questions, uh, the Q&A section. Tonight's story was shared to me by the lovely Lisa from KG Tropicals. She sent me this. Whoa, look at that. It's covering me all up. This is the way I have to do this. I have to add this during the stream. Otherwise, it, uh, it, it just bogs everything down and messes everything up. So what we have here, ladies and gentlemen, is a article that I'm going to read to you. I'm not going to put the whole article up here, um, but I did put a link, I think. Let me check here. I think I put a link to it in the description. If I didn't, I'll add it later on. Um, or perhaps if someone else has seen this, maybe they can, uh, can share that link. But I'm going to read you this article here. Australian Border Force Arrest Vietnamese Man Trying to Smuggle Endangered Fish into, I'm assuming this is pronounced Adelaide. That's how I'm going to say it, and I'm not going to feel bad for it. A man has been arrested at the Adelaide airport after one of the world's most expensive aquarium fish was found alive in a bag hanging around his neck. The Vietnamese national was frisk searched after stepping off of a flight from Malaysia and the 34-year-old pulled out the bag containing a fully red Asian arowana. My absolute dream, the fish I've always wanted and I will probably never have. The fish would the, the fish which could fetch upwards of a thousand dollars in Australia is endangered and its trade is controlled under the International Convention in Trade of Endangered Species, to which Australia is a signatory. Also known as the dragonfish, the Asian Asian community believe this species brings good luck and wealth due to its red color and coin-like scales. The fish, which could grow up to 90 centimeters long, was rumored to sell up to $300,000 in China. I don't know how that translates to American dollars. And the market price for a rare albino could set a buyer back 70,000. If they're that rare, wouldn't they be more than the red? Anyway, in Australia, it is illegal to own an Asian arowana unless it is legally imported which makes no sense. Australian border forces officer, border force officers arrested the man who was granted bail to appear before the Adelaide Magistrates Court in May. The fish had to be euthanized, huh? As illegal imports of exotic animals can introduce serious pests and disease diseases that pose a significant biosecurity risk to Australia. ABF Regional Command SA Chief Superintendent Brett Liebick said. Um, and I don't think that I really need to read 
any more of it. There's a couple of little more things, but who cares? You get the gist of it. This guy, uh, you can see him in this picture here. He's holding the bag. He has this red arowana in a bag that he wore around his neck. He's a little teeny guy. So I don't know if he was thinking maybe he would pass through and nobody would see this bulge hanging in his shirt or whatever. I don't know. I don't know what his plan was, but they caught him and he's in big, big trouble. And I just think this is sad. I, I wish, I think it's sad because I want one and I've always wanted one. So yeah, there's a little bit of bias there, but it's, it's also because I don't understand it. There's a lot of it that I don't understand. So many of these fish are being bred in farms now. So I like, okay, look, I've never seen an Asian arowana for sale because I live in the United States and we're the dummies that aren't allowed to have them. And I guess Australia, y'all are dummies too that aren't allowed to have Asian arowanas, which is just absurd. Um, so I don't, I've never seen them for sale. I've seen some shady ads online for them to be sold in the United States, but I didn't take advantage of those. But I've never seen them for sale, so I don't know if this is even available. But I've never heard of a wild-caught Asian arowana for sale. And I'm going to go ahead and go out on a limb here and guess that just like you won't find a butterfly goldfish in the wild, I'm guessing you wouldn't find a red arowana in the wild either or a red tail golden or a green or the yellows or any of them so or the yellow ones called gold i don't know i've never seen them for sale i've never heard of them ever being in the in the hobby as wild caught fish so i don't know how it would threaten the the wild population of these fish um and especially when you consider if they would allow just a few just a few farms in the United States to have them. They would buy them all up, they would bring them here, they would breed them, and they would probably breed them rapidly because these are valuable fish. We could spread them all out throughout the United States and it would have no impact whatsoever on the wild Asian population of these arowanas. So I don't believe the whole it's endangered thing. Uh, if the idea was that they were gonna be pulling these fish out of wherever they come from in Asia. I mean, I, silvers come from the Amazon. I don't know where the Jardinis or the Asians come from. Um, I'm assuming rivers in China or somewhere in Asia. Who cares? It doesn't really matter. They're not going to be pulling them from there, putting them in a bag and shipping them to us in the United States. I can understand them not wanting to do that. I get that. That makes sense, especially if there is the danger of them going extinct. But I, that's not what would happen in the aquarium if, if you were breeding them for the aquarium trade, that, that would not happen. It would be weirdos like me that would be willing to pay a couple thousand dollars for one of these fish to keep in, a, in an aquarium in my house. I've got a 240 in my garage that would be perfect for that fish. I'm not going to, like they said in this article, which just, I'm sorry, it, it pissed me off. The part where it says, Potentially devastating impact of foreign diseases and predator. Really? How is me putting that in my aquarium going to impact and, and, and spread disease? And oh, Come on. I don't get it. I don't understand it. I think that it is a conspiracy and I don't blame the Asians for it. I love Asian people. Don't get me wrong. Hopefully we've got some in the stream tonight. I think the Asians want the arowanas all to themselves. I think that's what it is. And you know what? I would too if I was them. I think that's what it is. And so they've got a wink, wink deal with Australia and the United States and all of these other countries and say, hey, we, we're not going to send any of these to you because we love these fish. They are a sign of honor for us. We want to keep them just for ourselves. And our guys are saying, all right, fine, go ahead. I don't know. Tinfoil hat wearing on my bald head today. I don't know, but I think that's what's going on here. And again, I hate it because I want one of these fish so bad. I've wanted one ever since I was 19 years old and I'll probably never have one. I, but if it were me and I, it was up to me, I wouldn't ship them out of the country either. I'd keep them all for myself. But anyway, I think it's interesting how much trouble this guy could possibly be in. I mean, is he in the same amount of trouble as he would be if he was bringing a lion cub 
or a tiger. I mean, that sounds crazy what they're talking about here uh, of $210,000 for individuals and a, a million 50,000 for corporations would be the penalty for illegally importing these fish. Good Lord, can you imagine that? That just seems outrageous. I don't know what that translates to, to US dollars, but that seems like a harsh penalty for something like that. And let's face it, if we were rich enough, we could get anything. I mean, Michael Jackson had elephants and giraffes and Mike Tyson had a, a tiger. I mean, people can get exotic animals. If I get rich enough, can I get an Asian arowana? Can I you know, put money in the right people's hands to make that happen? Who knows? But anyway, interesting. Interesting that this would make the news. Uh, now I have something else here. Uh, and I don't know where Lisa found that, by the way. Let me go ahead and take these off and then show you a comment. This is a fun comment that I got that I actually entertained the idea of putting uh, as the comment of the week. But I said, you know what? This is so similar to what we are going to be talking about in the what's going on segment that uh, I thought I would put it on here. It comes from Michael Johnston and he says, do they give you any trouble at state lines when transporting fish? Like, do they ask you to take them out and identify each fish, stressing them out even more, or do they generally leave you be? Now, I'm going to go ahead and assume that Michael Johnston uh, is not from the United States. If you are, maybe whatever state you live in, you've never been out of that state. <laughs> But there are no borders between states in the United States. If you're if you're asking about the United States, it, we're all one country here. You don't get checked until you leave the country and go somewhere else or come back. Um, but to go from Virginia to Maryland, which I do regularly, I did today, to cross a state border, nobody checks you. You don't get checked for anything like that. So if I had an Asian arowana wrapped around my neck, I could drive from Virginia to California, no problem. But as soon as I try to cross over into a, a foreign territory, which would be either Canada or Mexico, that's where we would have a problem. And I honestly think that people are so lazy in the United States. I think if you were going out with one of these fish, I think they'd probably be like, get yourself out of here. But coming back in, who knows? I, I don't know. I don't know if the lazy American, I, I shouldn't say that because these are people that are protecting our safety. But I just don't, I can't imagine somebody taking a fish that seriously, like, how dare you have that fish? I'm going to put you in handcuffs because of a fish. I mean, you got people flying over mountains of cocaine. <laughs> anyway, I could go all night long. But uh, but the answer to the question, Michael Johnston, it says on here, if you're reading the comment with me, it says four days ago. It wasn't four days ago. I took that screenshot when that comment was four days old. I think that's probably well over a month old, but I don't know because the comments have been coming in so rapidly lately uh, and the new subscribers, good Lord, y'all, where are y'all coming from? Uh, it's it's absolute insanity what's been happening with our channel. Uh, I could not be happier. I could not be prouder. If you are a recent subscriber to the channel, thank you so much for, for coming along. And I'm not talking about channel members. I thank them too. I'll thank you all at the end, but I'm talking about just regular old subscribers. If you're new to the channel, welcome. Thank you so much for being around and for whatever reason, wanting to see more of us. That is a real honor. So here we go. I'm supposed to mute my computer because the emails are coming in nonstop that are, this person has subscribed to you. That person has subscribed to you. And I'm not trying to be a jerk about it. It's a beautiful thing. I love that sound, but not when I'm trying to stream. Let's move on from what's going on. Nothing else going on, really. I mean, Lisa and I have been talking about some things, uh, which I'm not ready to announce. Um, but they're big things. And they could be, oh boy, they could be big for this channel uh, if it ends up coming to fruition, which I think it will because Mama's on board. If Mama's on board, then it's going to happen. And you know what? wasn't even my idea. It was hers. So that almost guarantees that what her and I have been talking about will end up happening. If it's my idea, we got to think about it for a couple of years. But if it's hers, then uh, then she's right on it. But anyway, let me not bury myself even farther tonight. Let's get into the first 
question of the night. I like this. I can just bring the questions over and I can put them up on the screen and you can read along with me so much better than last week. So Sunshine Aquatics, uh, if, you're, if you're new here, if this is your first uh, stream with me, I've only been doing this for a couple of weeks, we do the what's going on segment, then we get into Q&A, which these are questions that come directly from you in the comments section of my video. Not the live chat, but the comments anywhere on my channel, on any of my videos, I go through them, and I screenshot them and I bring them over here and I answer them in uh, these streams. So Sunshine Aquatics said, hey John, another awesome video. I have a question for you. I'm currently setting up a Peacock and Hap Cichlids tank. I'm trying to decide if I want to use some gravel substrate that I have left over from another tank or switch to sand because I like how they interact with the sand, i.e. digging. I watched a video you did a few years, a few years, I think he meant back, where you were talking about Carib Sea African Cichlid Sand being the best, yet you don't use it now. What is your advice on types of substrate for cichlids now? So, go ahead and take this off. It's an extra step, but I'm okay with it. So, you're right. I don't use this, um, the African Cichlid Mix. But it's not because I don't like it. Uh, it's not. It's not for that reason at all. We got that. Uh, it was more than a few years ago. That was like 2013. It might have been 2014, but I don't know. That was when we did an overhaul of our 240 gallon tank, the eight foot 240 gallon tank. Um, we sold that tank when we shut the shop down. We had a guy come in and buy the tank, and uh, and he bought the background with it and. The substrate. It, he didn't buy them with it. It was the substrate. I was just like, you can take that with you. Um, so I didn't scoop it all out and keep it and then put it into my other tanks, which I suppose I could have. But you know what? We got 140 something tanks set up and you got to move everything back to the house and your business failed and you're disappointed and all of that. The last thing you want to do is worry about 400 pounds of sand. <laughs> so we left that in the take. We let them let him take it with him. And, uh, and that was that. So we got rid of the tank. The, the sand went with it. I did not get rid of that substrate because I didn't like it. Uh, I actually did like it. It looked very nice. I got a lot of feedback. Uh, if you look at the comments of that video, you'll see that there's a lot of people that didn't like the way it looked. Uh, they said that it um, washed out the fish. Uh, yes, substrate does have a huge impact on the colors of your fish. And I can definitely see what those people were saying, but I liked it. I liked the way it looked. I understood what they meant. Uh, it was a complete departure from what I had before. I had a darker substrate in there. Uh, it was like a, a, a dark brown mixed in with black. And then we switched from that to white. And it was a drastic change. I liked it, but a lot of people didn't. It is what it is. We all have our own tastes. Uh, but as far as the function of the sand, it was really nice. Uh, as long as you don't mind the fish moving it around, which they're going to do. African cichlids are going to do that. Uh, and, and a lot of times they'll do it with whatever substrate you have. You can't really stop them from doing that. Particularly, I've noticed haps do it more um, with gravel because they can fit it in their mouths. You know, I've got gravel in this tank here now, smaller gravel. Um, and the peacocks, they haven't messed with it at all. It, the whole reason why, now watch him do it. Watch him do it right here while I just said that they don't mess with the gravel. That, that's just, just weird. He's not flashing. Everything's okay in that tank. But anyway, um, they don't really mess with the substrate in there. But when it was the sand, oh, we had some big dogs in there that were throwing sand all over the place. And I actually didn't mind it. I actually thought it was kind of cool. We had a really nice Universal Rocks background in the back, which we're going to talk more about them uh, as we proceed through here, because uh, uh, there's another comment about that. But uh, nice background, and it was awesome. And but, so the fish would move the sand around, and they would kick it up, and it would go on to the background. And so you would see the sand on the back. It looked very cool. I mean, I, I loved it. Um, but where was I going with that? But anyway, they, they moved it around all over the place. I didn't mind it because every time I, I would do a water change, I would just take my hands and I would smooth it all out. No big deal, you know. 
as long as that doesn't bother you, then you'll be fine. Um, now, the, the other thing about that particular type of substrate is that it will buffer your water. So if you're in need of an alteration of your water parameters, um, then a, a substrate like that would be great for you. I would rather do that than use chemicals to achieve a certain water quality. You know what I mean? Uh, that's just me. Uh, I would rather put something in there that's going to kind of hold it steady, as steady as possible, rather than uh, having to use chemicals. I, I don't like using chemicals to adjust hardness or pH or anything like that. I'd rather use natural stuff, but that's just me. So really, it is a matter of preference. Uh, I like sand substrates. I keep looking up because the caps are playing. And they always play when I'm streaming. I don't know what their problem is. But um, anyway, so it's a, it's a preference thing. If you like sand, if you like the look of that, Carabsi, they make a great product. I mean, everybody knows that. That African cichlid mix is awesome. You don't have to get the white. You can get the one that has like the broken up shells in it and stuff. That's a really cool looking substrate. Um, whatever it is that you like, that's what you can go with. But if there is a, an alteration to your water chemistry uh, that you're after, that can certainly help. Um, but I don't think that one is better than the other as far as I don't think that that substrate's any better than this one because I like them both the same, <laughs> if that makes sense. So there you go. Let me move on to here. On the topic of backgrounds, uh, Royal Palm, and I, I should start saving where these comments came from. Uh, but then I'd be covering up my bobbleheads on the screen. But anyway, uh, I don't know what this video came from. Uh, John slash Lisa, tears, tears from laughing from you two, cracking me up. I'm assuming that would be an episode, episode of 10 things. This is a question I need to ask. I have a universal flat rock background on or in my 120 gallon with discus. Just been thinking in the long run, would what would that do? After time, should I clean behind it? I like the look of the discus. I like the look the discus pop from the background. Good video also. Um, so yeah, I love Universal Rocks backgrounds. I'm sorry about my chair. I, I hope y'all aren't hearing that too much. Um, I love Universal Rock. I love them. Universal Rocks. I love them. As a company, I love the Duns. I love the whole deal they have going on over there. And it's very upsetting that uh, that we're not still a thing. It's, we're not on the outs. We don't hate each other. There's no bad blood. There's no any of that. Everything's good. We're all fine. It's just that, you know, we're not, we're not working together at the moment. Um, and that's disappointing because I love their products so much. The reality is I wouldn't really have anywhere to put one of their backgrounds right now. Anyway, I mean, I could put one in there, sure. Uh, but until we start to set up our big tanks, which who knows when that's going to be, um, I, I wouldn't really have anywhere to put them. So it's it's all good. It's all fine. But tell you a little story that pertains to the question here. Uh, I had, and, and this is all, you can see it on video. You can't see this part on video, but you can see the background on the video. I set up a 125 at my house, not this house, the one before it. And I put African cichlids in it. I put a huge shipment of African cichlids from Live Fish Direct in there. And I also got, right at the same time, a new Malawi rock background from Universal Rocks. So if you search Malawi rock background uh, on, on my YouTube channel, you'll find it. Uh, don't do it now, though, because the stream's not over. Wait till it's over. Uh, but... When I put that in, the tank was already up and running. It had been running for a long time. It was already very well established. So I just took the background and I just put it in there. It was full of water. I just put it in there and, and kind of worked it in down at the bottom and, you know, pushed the substrate towards the front. And then I pushed the background up into place and it fit perfectly. And I pushed all the substrate back and I left it. And there you go. It was good to go. Um, and it was beautiful. It was gorgeous. Well, I had a bunch of big haps in there, big peacocks. They were a lot bigger than the fish I have right now. And there was a couple of fish that were moving the substrate around quite a bit. And they pulled out this big pile of gravel. It was small gravel like I have in here. And so there was like this big pit towards the bottom of the, of the back of the tank, right at the bottom of the background. And there was a little gap about that big maybe a half inch from the bottom of the tank 
to the bottom of the background. I hope I'm making sense. There's just a little gap, not big enough for any of the fish that I had to get under there, but enough to get poop back there. What ended up happening was I was doing a water change routine and I put my siphon hose down in that little pit and a bunch of poop came from behind the background. I said, uh-oh. So I left it there and I left it there and I left it there and there was just nonstop poop coming from behind this background. So I said, uh-oh, you know, what, what's this? It's not stopping. Let me see what's going on here. So like I said, the, the background was not attached at all. I leaned the background forward and there was four inches of poop piled up behind that background. Now, don't be alarmed. This is not the background's fault. This is this guy's fault that this happened because I didn't have it sealed in the back there. I just placed it in there. And that particular background and a lot of the backgrounds that I had from Universal Rocks, I, I, don't, I never got any of the flat ones like you're talking about. I got the ones that have, they, they protrude out into the tank. They've got a, a lot of 3D to them. And so there were these large cavities behind the background which if yours is flat you wouldn't have but this one did and so it, it was a place for this poop to gather back there uh, and that was that was a big problem now it wasn't the end of the world it was just something like every other water change i would just lean it forward the fish would freak out a little bit and i would vacuum back there and no big deal you know it's just a, a, a an extra five minutes to my maintenance not a problem um but I just think about what if I hadn't found that? What if I hadn't noticed that would it have just built up all the way to the top and overflowed? I mean, good Lord, can you imagine? So there was a lot of poop back there. I had some heavy hitters in that tank. There was maybe, I don't know, 26 fish in there or so. You look at the video, you'll see it. There's quite a big, quite a lot of big fish in there. Uh, big haps, big peacocks. And they can do some pooping. And they did a lot of it. And it was piled up back there. It was scary. Because, you know, that's the kind of thing that could cause a crash like that. Uh, so I'm glad I found it. No harm, no foul. Uh, but let that be a lesson to me. And let that be a lesson to you asking about the backgrounds. If I was to do it all over again. If Universal Rocks hit me up tomorrow and said, hey, we want... I'm not going to try the Australian accent, but we want to get you a background in that 75 and, and your other tanks when you set them up, whatever. Uh, I would not do it the same way I did before. Again, not the background's fault. Uh, if it was a perfectly flat one, which in that tank I would probably want because it's not that deep. Uh, if it was a perfectly flat one, I'd probably just do what I did with the other one. But if it's one that comes out into the uh, into the tank, has a lot of, you know, dimension to it um i would i would absolutely empty the tank drain it out dry it out and i would silicone that bad boy to the tank uh, that's exactly how i would do it and i would do that 100 times out of 100 now simply because of what i had happened there again not the background's fault i'm gonna keep saying it over and over and over again not the background's fault it was absolutely my fault and i learned my lesson so there you go if you are a 3D background user, uh, my caps are about to lose. Again, <laughs> wonderful day. So uh, we won the cup last year, so I'm okay with that. But it's not like they're out. Anyway, um, pay attention to that. If you have a lot of open area behind the background, understand that it's a huge pain in the butt if fish get caught back there and understand that they might not get caught back there, but their poop can. And so uh, secure it to the back of the tank so that you don't run into that problem. Uh, plus, you know, it looks better that way too. So, all right, let's move on. Moving through this stuff really quick. So this is a good one here. Um, I found this one, I think yesterday. Uh, Matt James asks, hey, first time viewer, I enjoyed your video very much. I have a question about cleaning. Years ago, I had a 60 gallon freshwater tank. Every month for 10 years, I cleaned any algae from the inside of the tank, took apart the filter, cleaned it, vacuumed the gravel, and did about a quarter water change. 
The tank looked great and I didn't lose but a couple fish in 10 years. That's a good accomplishment. I haven't had a tank in several years and I wanted to get one again. So seeing this video, should I not clean the filter? Even when it builds up with algae. Do I just change the charcoal insert or is it okay to continue my previous cleaning routine? Routine. Thank you. I appreciate your time and experience. So if I was doing this the old way, I would uh, I would go back and I would delete where I said routine twice because that almost seems like I'm picking on the guy. He, he typed the word routine twice. He didn't mean to do that. But um, Or cleaning routine, routine. Maybe he meant it in there twice. Who knows? Um, so here's the deal. Okay, I, I'm going to explain all of this to anybody watching here. And I hope everybody agrees with me because I'm not going to say anything controversial. I'm not going to ruffle any feathers even though I've been known to do that. Every single aquarium is different. What was that guy's name again? Because I want to refer to him by name, Matt. Okay, Matt. I have a nephew named Matt. So <clears throat> every aquarium is different. Your aquarium that you had back in the day, you cleaned once a month. Uh, you cleaned out the filter. You did what you did. You did 25% water change uh, and it was working. You only lost a couple of fish. So that particular situation for you, that routine routine that you were on worked and you didn't have any problems. So if you were to come to me with that, like so many people do, and say, this is what I've been doing. I've been doing it for a long time. It works really well. And, but I watched your video and now I feel like I should change. I'm like, whoa, wait a minute. Don't change because you watched my video. If what you're doing right now is working, stick with it. There's no reason to change anything because every aquarium is different. I don't know what your situation was with that tank. I don't know what you had in it, how many fish you had in it, if you had plants, if you had a, you know, what kind of filter you had. I don't know. And it doesn't matter because every single tank is different. Every water source is different. Everything is different. You and I, Matt, we could both set up a tank let's say a 55 gallon tank. I don't know where you live, who cares? And we're both gonna put six angels in it, okay? No decorations whatsoever. We're both gonna use a Penguin 350 hang on the back filter because we're old school and we're both gonna use marine land heaters, who cares? We're gonna set the tanks up exactly the same. And you live in Idaho and I live in Virginia. Our tanks are still gonna be very different. They're going to be very different because of the atmosphere. They're going to be different because of your water source. They're going to be different because you might have sunlight going directly into it where mine is in the basement and there's it's never exposed to sunlight. You leave your light on for 18 hours a day and I only leave mine on for six. There's, there's so many factors involved that are going to determine what works and what doesn't work. So what every fish keeper has to do whether you're setting up your first tank or your 39th tank, you have to find that balance, the balance of how much maintenance that you should do. So the way I always tell people to do it is start off in the very beginning when you're just cycling your tank, you're gonna be doing water changes like crazy. If you're doing a fish in cycle, you're gonna be doing water changes all the time because you're gonna to wanna to get rid of that ammonia and save your fish. So once you get past that and your tank is cycled, now it's time to figure out how to balance everything. Meaning how much maintenance should I do and how often? You start off doing it once a week and let's use that 55 gallon tank with six angels in it. It's not a huge load if they're small. They're gonna get big and when they do get big, of course it's gonna be a significantly bigger lo load. But start off doing 50% once a week water change and get in there. You're not going to clean your filter out every week, but doing your water change, water in, water out, water in, and everything's good. And that's working perfectly for you. You've been doing it this way for a month or so, a couple of months. Let's give it a couple of months. And everything's going great. Fish are healthy. Everything's wonderful. Tank always looks good. All right, let's see if we can't maybe extend it out a little bit. Let's go every other week. We'll do the same thing, 50% water change. And if that works out, then maybe you could go to a 25%. You understand where I'm going with this? It's like, if everything that you're doing is good, 
and you're okay with that, well then stick with it. You're not hurting anything. But if you want to figure out what's the minimum amount of work that I should do, that's not what you were asking me. I know that. But you want to figure that out. You know, hey, I don't want to mess with this thing every week. I don't want to do water changes all the time. I'm not one of those people. I love my fish, but I don't want to be working on the tank all the time. I understand that if you're that way. You can work with it to figure out what your maintenance schedule needs to be. And it's absolutely true that there are people that do water changes once a month, once every month and a half, every eight weeks. There are a lot of people that do that because they have an aquarium set up that can do that. They've got live plants in there. They're, you know, they're not running their lights very long ex except for what the plants need. They've only got small little tetras in the tank. They're not creating a huge load and they're only feeding once a day and they can get away with only doing a water change once every six weeks. Those people are out there. There's lots of them out there. Um, but you have to figure out if that's going to be okay. So your routine that you had, Matt, it might work, but I don't know. I mean, I don't know what you're planning on setting up. I don't know what you had set up before, but try. You know, in the beginning, you're going to have to be doing a lot of water changes, but then start to work with it and figure out what's going to work and what's not um, and figure out how long you can go. I mean, if you can, if your fish are healthy and they're happy and you're doing a 25% water change once a month, you're good. That's okay. And don't let anyone ridicule you for that because, hey, it's working. Why change it? So, whoo, that was a long one. I rambled quite a bit there. Okay. Do you know how many people yell at me in the comment section for vaping? It's insane. It's crazy. Oh, uh, okay. So that's it for the comments or not the comments, but the questions. Three questions. I try to get through three questions every single week. Those were a lot of fun. Uh, I hope y'all were able to get something out of it. Now let's move on to comment of the week. This one is, it's not going to incite a rant. Not at all. No, because John's not a ranter. No. Uh, I, I don't think this guy, who cares? I don't think this guy's a jerk, so I'll say his name. If I thought he was a jerk, I would have blacked out his name. Hey, or, or this video, I think was, or this comment was on one of our 10 things where we were talking about fish being abused. Uh, there was, they were two weeks apart. First one was these fish need to be out of the hobby. And the second one was the most mistreated fish in the hobby. This was on one of those. How many fish have you called slash killed while you operated a fish store and while your store went bust. I don't know if that was a dig. Thousands, he says? Tens of thousands? I don't mean to be rude, but what is the reality of keeping a fish shop? So I, I struggle with this comment. I'm not gonna go all in on this guy because there's no reason to. Th this was either done to be rude because whenever I see somebody say, I'm not trying to be rude, but, or if I say, if they say, you know, I'm not being racist, but I'm like, okay, here comes a black joke or here comes a Mexican joke. I'm just waiting for it. If somebody says that, I'm not trying to be a homophobe, but you know that they're pretty much setting you up to hear something that's going to be a little over the edge. So when somebody says, I'm not trying to be rude, they're just trying to make themselves feel a little bit better. So that rubs me the wrong way, making me think that this guy kind of did have a little bit of, of mal intent, but it doesn't matter. I'm not mad at him. It's fine. Um, we did not kill thousands of fish. We did not kill tens of thousands of fish. We did not kill tens of fish, not even singles of fish. I swear to you, I'm telling you the God's honest truth. Strike me dead. I actually, I, I'm not a believer, but if you believe that there's a God, he can strike me dead right now while I am on this live stream if I'm lying to you. We did not kill a single fish when we had our fish store. Uh, now, prior to that, when we were breeding, we did have one particular tank. And I don't remember which one it was, but I think it was Dragon Blood Peacocks. I'm, I'm not 100% sure. Every once, in fact, I do remember, it was absolutely the Dragon Bloods. There was one particular female in there 
that for whatever reason, one out of every 40 fry that she had, she gave us probably nine batches of fry. She was a worker. And of those nine batches of fry, there was like six or seven fry, not, you know, just six or seven individual fry that looked like a horseshoe. The fry were, they, they were deformed. And these would happen like one or two at a time. It, it's not like they all came out this way, but they were, they were literally that shaped. So their mouth was almost touching their tail. And the poor things would just swim in circles, little teeny tiny circles over and over and over again. It was so hard to see. And when we found those, we, we, would, we would let those go. Uh, we did it in a way that was instant. And I think probably the most humane way of doing it, we fed them to our Venustus breeders. I, I mean... I'm the guy in two videos, Lisa said it too, we were, we're hardcore against feeder fish and all that. I'm not going to get into all that here, but I am the kind of person, I will not kill an animal, period, unless it's threatening my life or it's a spider, because they don't deserve to live and they should all be killed. But I, I will not, I'm the kind of person that if I'm walking along the sidewalk, I will stumble and fall because I was stepping over to miss stepping on an ant. If you don't believe me, come hang out with me and you'll see it. I, I just, I can't do it. In a situation like that, the way I would do it would be, I just wouldn't even think about it. It would happen so fast. I would get, okay, look, it's another one of the horseshoe ones. Boop. And I wouldn't even let Lisa know because she would lose her mind too. That was really the only time, and there was maybe six or seven fish that we did that with throughout our entire time of breeding fish and keeping a fish store. We never once ever did anything other than those six or seven fish that would be considered culling. Oh, this brood turned out to be bad. They're not this, or those two fish that never happened to where we wiped out an entire brood of fry or anything like that. So I'm a little offended when some joker that I don't even know comments, how many thousands of fish did you kill or cull? How many tens of thousands? Come on now. I think what you were trying to do, but I can't figure it out. It's okay. We're friends anyway. But I, I kind of feel like you were trying to take a stab at me because it was a video where we were talking about how people should not kill fish like feeders. And you were mad and you decided to lash out at me. Well, how many did you kill? Hmm, hmm, hmm. And that's why that happened. I think that's what you were doing. That was my Tom Segura, by the way. Um, it never happened except for six or seven times in our garage. And that was six or seven fish, not six or seven dozen or six or seven thousand, like you wanted to say. Uh, so... Yeah, we didn't do that. We never did. Uh, I am the biggest softy in the world when it comes to animals like that. I mean, it, when, when it comes to mistreatment, when it comes... I'm not some flaming heart liberal here, folks. I, I'm not. I'm, I don't talk about politics on here, and I never will. But uh, I, I'm not some crazy person that's going to go try to get fish stores shut down and all this. I'm not that guy. But I, I will not allow there to be mistreatment of animals and I certainly won't do it myself. I don't hunt. I know you're like, he lives in King George freaking Virginia. He lives in the country. He's redneck. He wears camo shorts, which you can't see. I'm not a redneck. I do drive a pickup truck and I drive a van for my job, but I'm not a redneck and I don't hunt and I never will hunt unless the zombie apocalypse happens and I have to hunt to feed my family. I can't do it. I'm not against hunting. I'm not one of those people that will stop being friends with you if you're a hunter. I, I just get, I don't do it. I can't do it. I can't kill animals like that again, unless it's a spider, because I do believe they are demons sent from hell and none of them deserve to live on this planet. Lisa would say the same thing about snakes. Not me. I think snakes are cool as long as they're not making a weird noise and trying to dart at me. I do get scared. We have copperheads here. And uh, I do get scared that one of my dumb dogs that's four pounds will have a little run in with a copperhead. 
that kind of scares me a little bit. That would be a dead snake. I'm not going to lie to you because I'd be so enraged that I would I would take care of that snake. But Lisa, when it comes to snakes, she's like I am with spiders. Just instantly, boom, done, gone. Not me. Because mainly what we're going to see around here are going to be garter snakes. And garter snakes eat spiders. I like that kind of snake. That's my kind of snake. But I can't, I can't kill animals. I just can't do it. It's just not in my being to be able to do that. Again, uh, I've got a daughter that hunts and they go on turkey shoots and they go, I don't try to stop her from doing that. I, I don't try to force my beliefs on even the kids. I just don't. Uh, so there you go. Wow. That did turn into a rant, didn't it? I didn't mean for it to be that way, but my point is there was never a time when we had our fish store or our garage where we were culling thousands of fish. No, we had fish die because there's not a fish store on this planet that doesn't have fish die. Come on. Uh, but they were never intentional. So there you go. Comment of the week, done. That was a long one, and I hope I didn't scare a lot of people off. The number's actually gone up since I've been doing it, so I guess I didn't scare anybody away. Now, what do I have here? I'm, I'm sorry here. I'm going to read this. Oh, I'm going to skip that one. I was going to do a second comment of the week, but that one's not worth the time. So I want to definitely keep comment of the week to one per week. Uh, so that's it. That's the comment of the week. Let's move on to John's World. If you haven't heard of John's World, this is a segment where I will answer. Hopefully the number doesn't just completely drop out to nothing. Number being how many people are watching. It's where I give you, the Tank Talk Live viewers, the opportunity to ask questions that are uh, having nothing to do with fish keeping. Uh, and there's, there's only two people that have asked questions for John's World yet. If you want to ask a question that has nothing to do with, uh, with fish keeping, put it in the comment section of any video on my channel with the hashtag John's World. And at this rate, whoever puts one up is gonna get it picked because nobody's doing it. It's making me really feel like nobody cares. But Denny's Aquatics is one that puts one up almost every week. He's thinking of all of these things and he's putting them up. Hashtag John's World. Tell us about your skateboarding career and your greatest moments and accomplishments. I wish you could call what I did a career. It, it wasn't. I was a skateboarder that enjoyed skateboarding with my friends. I had a good time. There was no career. There was no know anything. It was just me having a good time with my friends. But I will say that there were there were two times in my life of skateboarding where I had a, a, a thrilling thing happen. Uh, and one of them was I, I skated multiple times at a ramp in Centerville, Virginia. I was a vertical skater like Tony Hawk. Nowhere. <laughs> I was 10,000 times worse than, than Tony Hawk. But <clears throat> uh, I skated a ramp called Cedar Crest Country Club. Look it up on YouTube. This was a steel ramp. There are videos out there. I'm not in any of them, but some of my friends are. Uh, this is in Centerville, Virginia. And multiple times there, I skated with one Charles Lassick. He goes by the name Bucky. Uh, Bucky Lassick, who was the number one vertical skateboarder for 10 years straight uh, in, the, in the skating world. I skated with him multiple times when I was like 16 and so was he because we're the same age uh, and I was absolutely blown away then and I was thinking that kid is going to be something special because he was already special at 16 years old and he was already making a living skateboarding then uh, so that was really cool the other time uh, and you can if you've never heard of anything to do with skateboarding you can look these people up the other one uh, was Christian Hasoy. Uh, who was a, a, a an absolute skateboarding god. He is a legend, one of the best to ever do it. Uh, and I skated with him at a ramp called Mount Trashmore in Virginia Beach, which is no longer there. And that was my family and I, we went to Virginia Beach. My mom allowed me to bring a friend. I brought a friend by the name of John Balthazar, uh, who lives in San Diego now. Uh, him and I skated together every single day. We went to Virginia Beach. We went to Trashmore because it was a legendary place back then. And what do you know, one of the best skateboarders on the planet was there at the time. And that was a huge thrill. But that 
pretty much sums it up. Other than that, I had a great time with my friends. That's that's what skateboarding was all about. And I still, to this day, Lisa could tell you, I look forward to the X Games as much as I look forward to the Super Bowl. I mean, I really do. I watch them religiously. I love it. I love the Dew Tour. I love all of that. Beautiful, beautiful thing. So, Denny's Aquatic once again. Aquatics asked another question because he's the only one that cares. He asked, tell us about some of your favorite baseball moments with the Nats. I am a seam head. I'm a Nat fan. I'm a Nat fanatic. Uh, there's, there's two really there. One would be the game four walk-off uh, in the playoffs with Jason Worth. That was a big, big moment for me. Uh, and I actually didn't see it. I was listening to it on the radio because I was on my way home from work. Uh, I was down in Virginia Beach. I was just talking about Virginia Beach. On my way home from work after a long day and I heard it on the radio and it was the most exciting thing. But the other thing, this is very, very special. And I'm gonna show you a little prop to, to talk about this. Last year, Lisa bought me tickets to opening day, uh, which was a huge thrill. Now, this was not opening day to the season for the Nats. This was the home opener for the Nats, which is just as good as far as I'm concerned. And in the beginning of the game, before the game, they do all kinds of ceremonies and stuff like that. And everybody who got awards the previous year, Gold Gloves, Silver Sluggers, Cy Young, they give them those awards before that game. So I was there. Lisa got us tickets like six rows behind the Nats dugout. It was beautiful. I'm talking about the Nats and the numbers are going down, down, down. But we were sitting right behind the dugout, which means the players were right there in front of us, 10 feet from us. And we got to see Max Scherzer get his Cy Young Award, which was the second one in a row. Uh, and the cool thing about it was, for whatever reason, he had his previous year's Cy Young plaque with him. And he went out there and was given his most recent Cy Young Award for the second year in a row. And he came out with those two Cy Youngs and he stood right in front of us, 10 feet from us, with both of those Cy Youngs like this. They're big plaques. And he was holding them like this, smiling, basically posing for pictures. And my dumb self never took out my phone to take pictures of that. And I wished I had, I regretted it. He, he smiled and he did his thing and let everybody take pictures of him. And then he packed them in and he went back in the dugout and we didn't see him again because he didn't pitch that day. Strasburg pitched that day. And I was so brokenhearted. I was like, I can't believe I had Max Scherzer standing 10 feet from me holding two Cy Young Awards and I didn't get a picture of that. It, it broke my heart. But then two or three months later, surfing through eBay, looking for bobbleheads because I'm a bobblehead guy. Where are they? Right there. I just got that one on Friday. Lisa and I went up to the game. We were on TV um, and they were giving out those bobbleheads. But anyway, I collect bobbleheads and the only bobbleheads that I collect are the ones that they actually give away at the stadium. And so I was scrolling through eBay and look what I found. I found that pose that thing that Max Scherzer did that I wanted so bad to get a picture of and never got, they made a bobblehead of it. That is the pose that I was just talking about. And I said, well, I got to have that. So I bought it. I think I paid like 30 bucks for this guy, 25 bucks. I don't know. It wouldn't have mattered. It was worth it to me. So every time I see this, I remember seeing him actually doing that right in front of me. And that was a pretty cool thing. So yeah, that's about as accomplished as I get when it comes to the Nats. But uh, but yeah, there's that. Um, there's Steven Strasburg's debut game, which was a really big deal uh, and really reinvigorated my uh, my love of the Nats. And then uh, Jason Worth's walk off. That was that's my most fond memories of the Nats. And uh, and yeah, hopefully there are much, much more of those to come. So that's it for John's World. I'm going to go ahead and assume because, assume because I know he's a good dude. I'm going to assume that Denny is here with us tonight. I have the chat turned off. I'm going to go ahead and open it up now and, uh, and see if I'm right. But I bet you he's in here. 
Um, no, it's not scrolling like that. This is it's probably catching up. There's no way it's scrolling that fast because that's how fast Corey's goes. Okay. So, okay. So that, that's it for John's World. That was a lot of fun. Thank you, Denny, for sending that. Uh, was it Denny or Danny? Did I get that wrong? I, I'm i pretty, it's Denny, right? Whoop. Yep, Denny, see? <sighs> okay. Turn that off now. Okay, so let's get into now the part where I like to shout out the people I like to shout out everybody. There's 227 people in here right now. I want to thank every single one of you for being here with me. Uh, it really does mean a lot that you would spend your Thursday evening with me here. Uh, it's very, very much a thrill. We've got some super chats here. And as I said in the beginning of this stream, if you've been here all night with us, you know that uh, I like I said in the beginning, I will shout out every single super chat and, uh, and, and that's what we're going to get into now. So the first one came in right at the beginning. Paul Gunther, I'm going to say your name, hopefully, uh, with the $2 Super Chat. Keep up the great work. Thank you very much, my friend. That is huge. And then we had Ch Chilrish, Chilrish. I don't know what that name is, but thank you so much for becoming a new member to the KG Tropicals team. That is a thrill that somebody would want to see more of me and Lisa. We just did a members only live stream on Tuesday. It was a lot of fun. Uh, we only had a few people in there. And so it was just me and a couple of people and it was fun. We had a good time. Uh, so, you know, you'll have to keep your eyes open for a notification in the community page. If you've got notifications turned on, you will get it on your phone too. Uh, when we're going to do another members only live stream that's going to be a lot of fun and i want you to be a part of it next time chorish that that's terrible the way i'm saying the name but then we got travis langert with the five dollar super chat i've been thinking about and knowing your past would you open up a shop for retirement something to do given most everything out of pocket something to do given most everything out of pocket I'm not going to tell you I would never have another shop because that was a lot of fun. Lisa and I have very fond memories of it. Um, we have very fond memories of our garage when we were breeding fish there. That was a lot of fun. And, um, you know, we, we had a great time out there. Her and I, we would go out there, we would hang out for hours and that was a blast. The shop though, that adds a whole other element or a whole other level to it. And I just don't know. If, uh, if I would go that far again, I don't know. Um, especially, you know, where we're at and all that. I don't know. It's so much money to open one up. Uh, we would need help. We would need other people to be involved. It's get the aquarium co-op franchise. Yeah, that, that would work. Um, I mean, that would be a great idea if Corey did that. But uh, he'd be too expensive for me. I don't think I'd be able to do that. But, you know, I, I'm not going to say never because I've learned to never say never. But I just don't see that being in the cards. Um, but you know what? This YouTube thing is, is, is going crazy. And, you know, you never know from one day to the next what is going to happen. That's, that's a guarantee. And that's about the only thing I can guarantee is that I don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. So, uh, Mr. Chorish, I, I, I wish I knew how to say your name, not only became a member, but also decided to, on top of that, throw in the $5 super chat, just became a member, but wanted to say thank you for everything you do, especially for working with Corey back in the day. Yeah. I mean, and Corey's now in a whole other hemisphere and he left me behind back here, but no, I'm super proud of Corey. And, and that was a lot of fun back then. And you know what? I, I know without a doubt, if I was to call him up right now and say, Hey, let's do it again, he would do it. Um, so yeah, that was, that was a good time. And, um, you know, we'll have to see, um, 
Matty Ice 22. Does that have anything to do with Matt Ryan? I don't know. With the $10 Whopper, thank you for helping me get into this hobby. I owe you a lot. I bought quite a few fish from you back when you first opened your store. I had purchased my fish in college and still have them. Awesome. That says a lot to the quality of those fish and also says a lot to you, the fish keeper. So that's awesome. Well done there. Tea and talk with Reverend Sister Dominica with the $10 Super Chat. Wow, we got a, a lot of $10 bangers here today. Greetings, I have a bacterial bloom that has annoyed me for the last four days. My tank has fish in it. It was cycled before I put finish it fish in it. How do I remedy this issue? Do I just wait it out? Uh, a bacterial bloom, probably not, but if it's an algae bloom, which is what I think you mean, uh, like maybe your water is cloudy, uh, which is very common in a cycling or newly cycled aquarium, and people definitely hit the panic button. Uh, I've been known to do that in the past, like, oh no, what's happening? My water's cloudy and I cannot get it, uh, cannot get it cleared up. That is something that uh, I have found it best to wait it out. Now, bacterial infection, no, you're gonna wanna definitely treat that with medications um, if you're if it's going to start impacting your fish, but if it's simply a, a, an algae bloom that's making your water look gray, it's not going to hurt your fish unless it's happening due to ammonia. Um, but you said your tank is cycled, so I'm going to assume that there's no ammonia in there. So um, there are definitely uh, products that you can buy that work very well to eliminate algae. Um, but a lot of times with a with a um, a bloom like that, it's kind of temporary. It's going to come back. Um, a long time ago, one of my friends got when when one of my friends and I were very young, we were keeping fish together. But he was like three or four years ahead of me. I think I was like twenty, and uh, he. What was I thinking? Okay, so no, I, I just my brain went somewhere else. See what happens when I go into the chat. Um, he was a few years ahead of me. He knew what was going on and I had that happen to me and I was freaking out. I was like, I don't know what to do. I've tried everything. I've cleaned everything. I've tried all of that. And he said, leave it alone, dummy. And I did and it went away. So there you go. I mean, I'm not going to tell you that whatever's going on in your tank is going to go away without doing anything. I'm just saying if it's an algae bloom from just nature, then, uh, you know, as long as you're keeping on with your schedule, you should be fine. If it, if it just won't do anything, there are products out there. Fritz has one. API has one. There's a lot of products out there that will help with algae control. And they work, in my opin opinion, particularly well with that type of algae. Almost like that. Um, where the water kind of looks gray. I'm not saying that it's going to get rid of diatom algae or black beard algae or anything like that. But if your water's gray from an algae bloom, it'll almost always get rid of that. It does very well on that. So this happens every week. I start thanking people for Super Chats, and then they all start coming in. It makes me feel very special. And this is how we end up going for an hour and a half. So Naked Reefer, let me make sure I didn't skip anybody. Yep, Naked Reefer, what a funny name. Are you naked right now? Because that would just be weird. <laughs> I'm new here and enjoyed your show. I'll be back. Thank you so much. Uh, and thank you for contributing to the KG Tropicals Fund. That's always a thrill and uh, and glad to have you here. And I hope you have clothes on. We got a Jets fan, Tyler Beach. No comment whatsoever. Just says, hey, here's a dollar for nothing. Just here you go. Have it. That's yours now. That's awesome. Dan Gavioli. Oh, I nailed it, didn't I? Gavioli, is that it? Uh, and just says, thank you with the $2. Thank you, my friend. And I hope I said your name right. Ben Dominguez, you were a big help in my success as a new fish keeper. This is a small way to say thank you for making the hobby exciting. Glad you are back. And the $5 super chat attached to that. That is very generous of you, my friend. And I am so glad to be back. I, this is, this is life-changing for me. Lisa could tell you. It's very stressful. Yeah, sure, it is. Uh, that would be TMI, John. <laughs> yeah, the naked thing. <laughs> uh, and the... See, I don't know if Naked Reefer is a man or a woman, 
because then I said, are you naked? And you said, I can be. And that could be weird. Either way, actually, that could be weird. But I'm going to move on from that. <laughs> and, uh, oh, I don't even remember where I was because I, who knows? <laughs> but yes, it's been, uh, it's been a whirlwind ever since December. The, it's just the gloves came off. And everything started going crazy and everything started happening all at once. And and now here we are just reaching up at that 100K. It's almost there. It's, it's We're reaching and we're almost there. And uh, people are going to ask because they asked in the members only stream, what are we going to do for 100,000? And the answer is, I don't know. I, I, I don't know. Because this has all happened so fast, I, I don't know what we're going to do. Because that's just insane to me. It's insane to me to think that there's 100,000 people that care about what I do. It, it's just, it blows my mind. And that's never going to stop blowing my mind. Uh, I, I did not think that this would happen that fast. When I came back from my break, I kind of thought it could happen because I had seen so many had done it. And I was like, this could happen. But it's going to take a couple of years. And now here we are probably two weeks away from it. It's, it's just insanity. Um, so how did I get on that? I don't know. I don't know how I got on that. But that, this is what happens at the end. Famous Jones, who I met in uh, New Jersey with the $5.42 super chat. That's an interesting number. Is that somebody's birthday or something? Uh, very generous of you, my friend. Thank you so much. And I hope I see you uh, this year again at the Aquatic Experience. We didn't get a lot of chance to talk last time. I think uh, when Lisa and I go this year, I think I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna mingle more. Not that I don't want to be at the YouTube booth because I love the YouTube booth. I thought it was awesome. Um, I don't think I'm gonna spend much time there this this year coming up. Uh, again, not because I don't want to be around those people. That's crazy. I like all those people. I like them all a lot. But I think I just want to. I think I want to move around more. I think I want to explore more because I watched some videos of the aquatic experience long after I'd been there, you know, other people's videos. And I saw things that I did not see when I was there. And I'm like, well, that's because I was so preoccupied with everything going on in the booth and all of that, which the booth is awesome. Please don't take, but don't misunderstand me. It's absolutely awesome. And what Corey and Rob and all of them did over there was just fantastic. But I missed out on some stuff, and I don't want to miss out on some stuff. And one of the things that I missed out on was the opportunity to talk to people like Famous Jones, who was there wearing, I believe, New York Jets gear, or no, Giants. I believe it was Giants, and that made me not want to talk to him, but I said, you know what, it's a good guy, even though he has bad taste in football. Uh, and so hopefully I get a chance to spend some more time with you. Wow! I'm glad I didn't say anything negative about a Jets fan because Tyler Beach, that's the second one for the day, right? Isn't that, isn't that two for you? Yep. He just says, boom. He blows it up with a $20 super chat. Your channel has helped me with choosing my fish tank and all my accessories. I am getting the nitrogen cycle going and super excited to get the fish. I have a 20 gallon tank. Any recommendations that you have on the fish? Well, you're expecting me to probably say something, uh, my team is the Redskins. I'm ashamed of it. What are you going to do? Uh, but that's where I was born and raised. If you're asking me, because I looked over and I saw you said, what's your team? Uh, so you're expecting me to say something to do with African cichlids. But lately, I've very much been getting interested in the smaller fish, the guppies and the, and the quarry cats and these emperor tetras. I spend a lot of time with these fish have a lot of fun with them. They're awesome. Um, and, you know, Lisa has little nano tanks set up all over the house, literally all over the house. She was asking me if she could put one in the bathroom and I'm not making a joke. It's a, it's true. She asked me if she could do that. And I told her, why are you asking me? Because if you want to do it, you're just going to do it. So what is what I have to say? Why does it matter? But anyway, so I would probably go with something small like that, some type of nano fish that you can put several of them in a 20 gallon tank. They'll give you a lot of activity. They'll be a lot of fun. Um, look at those Tetris. I mean, come on, how could you not love that? Now, of course, that's a 75 gallon, considerably larger than a, a 20, but look at them. 
I mean, how could you not love that? How could you not want that? So there you go. Order up a half a dozen or, or six to eight purple emperor tetras from Rachel, which I don't think you can do because I don't think she's shipping fish right now. But order them from somewhere and you'll have a lot of fun with them. The blue ones, the purple ones, awesome. So there you go. That's what I would do. Or do a, a beta. Yes, I said beta, not beta. Sorry. Uh, sky's the limit. But just stick with nano fish. Don't make the mistake of putting fish in there that are too big that you're going to have to take out eventually and all that. Don't get into that. Have some fun with some smaller fish. They are a good time. Trust me. Okay, so we are we are done with the super chats. It's only ten eleven. How about that? Uh, you said it correctly, John. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, you know what's funny. I'm just going to say this because it's you know we're winding things down here. Are we under two hundred now? No, two twenty two twenty. 225 now the numbers are, oh john's getting ready to say something controversial i'm not but it's funny to me how on our 10 things betas video i said in the beginning of that video go watch it i said it very clearly i said lady listen i say beta, i say beta and i'm sorry but it's just the way my brain works i can't calculate beta in my head it just doesn't work i'm sorry about that but now let's move on. I said that in the beginning of the video. And then the funny thing about it is how many comments, look over there if you don't believe me, how many people put in the comments, you know, it's really pronounced beta and they spell it out and they put all this punctuation in there and people have put like dictionary uh, definitions and all, you, I guarantee you there's 40 comments of people saying I mispronounced it. And I'm like, so did you push play on the video and skip the first minute? And that's why you didn't see me already say that in the beginning? I don't know. But of course, I'm not going to yell at these people because I, I love these people. But that is funny to me that you can say it and then they'll still, I don't know. What are you going to do? But anyway, Bill G just came in and, and just knocked the door down and said, hi, John. Setting up an 85-gallon with 20-gallon sump. Want guppies, neon, tetras, quarries, and shrimp planted. How many of each with neons as the showpiece? Wow. Uh, first of all, I would I would go ahead and not do the guppies. Um, not, not with them. That's just me personally. I'm not saying they will not go together. I just probably wouldn't do that. I'd probably go with one or the other. Uh, the neon tetras are awesome. An 85-gallon... You didn't say, that. well, no, you said you wanted shrimp. Okay, so the, the neon tetras probably won't bother the shrimp, so you'd probably be good there. If it were me, I would go super heavy on the cardinals or, or neons, whichever ones you go with, and the shrimp, and just have it be that. Just have it be the, the, the neons all over the place and the shrimp, and it would be awesome. I don't think there's any rules on shrimp. I mean, did you see Mike uh, Aquapros the other day? or it might have been a couple weeks ago, I don't know, I watched the video the other day, put 103 in a little, like, 16-gallon tank. So I don't think that there's any rules with shrimp, but I could be wrong. Don't ask me. I'm, I don't own a shrimp. The only shrimp that I ever had completely disappeared, and I don't know where they went, and I still haven't found them. Um, but, so don't, you know, don't take shrimp advice from me, but if Mike can put 103... In a small tank like that, I think you're you're pretty much wide open with an 85 gallon and neon tetras. Good lord, in an 85 gallon, I'd I'd probably buy like 40 of them. I mean, I know that there's people that'll probably yell at me for that, but good lord, there is there are not many things prettier than a huge school of neon tetras or cardinal tetras. Either one of them, they're just amazing. That tank at Aquashella, the round tank with the the decoration in the middle. And those neons were just nonstop. There was like 600 of them in there, just constantly. That was the, one of the coolest tanks I've ever seen in my life. I wish I could have seen it in person. Every time I saw that in somebody's video, I was like, that is absolutely amazing. I love that. So a tank full 
of Neon Tetris and the shrimp. Shrimp and Corys, I don't think they go well together, do they? I don't know. The Corys would probably terrorize the shrimp because Corys are all over the place and they're going to be in the places where the shrimp are. So I don't know that I would mix those. How about let's just go with shrimp and, and neons and just be done with it and be happy with that. I think that'd be a lot of fun. Um, but everybody here knows I am not an expert. So you take that with a grain of salt. I'm just a guy that has the balls to talk about fish on YouTube. Now, that sounded really weird, didn't it? I don't mean it like that. What I mean is a lot of people, there are a lot of people that are way smarter than me when it comes to fish keeping, but they, they just can't get in front of a camera. They're scared or they're nervous or they're shy or whatever it is. So that's why I said what I said. I wasn't trying to be mean or anything, but... Um, but uh, you know what? I've never called myself an expert and I never will. So, uh, Tiger Barb school for the win. Yeah, that's a good school too, but, um, that doesn't beat a neon school though. Tiger Barbs are cool. They're little jerks, but they're cool. Uh, but a neon, ooh, man. All right, so you know what? Are we done? Are we done here tonight? I don't know if we're done or not. I mean, uh, we've kind of run out of things to talk about, haven't we? And that's that's kind of cool. My dog's out there crying, which means he wants me. I don't know what's left. We've already gone through everything. Lisa's coming down the steps, which means she's coming down here to tell me something. Let's see what that is before I get off of here. I know she's, I know what she's doing. No, I'm not. Oh, <laughs> she said, no, I'm not. Yeah. My Corys will eat some of my billion Malaysian trumpet snails. Yeah. I mean, Corys and, and, uh, particularly shrimp. I, I wouldn't do that. Uh, cichlids 23 says sports. I could talk sports all day long. Um, but you know what? I'm, I'm disappointed in my caps. Go down to Carolina and get embarrassed like that. In Carolina's a better team than people think, but uh, man, they shouldn't have gone down there and dropped both of those games like that. That that's that's kind of bad. We went to the Nats game last weekend, last Friday, and things were going very well. We got the bobbleheads. We got two of them because we were each there, and uh, and it was awesome. It was my first game this year. They were playing the Pirates, and it was great. Uh, it was pouring down rain throughout the entire game, which was not very good. We were in the front row in right field, but over just far enough in between the right fielder and the center fielder where nobody was throwing us balls. What are you going to do? They were throwing them to the kids anyway. We're going back next month, and we're sitting in right field again, and it's in the area where they'll be throwing balls. So I might come home with a ball that day from from my good guy, uh, Adam Eaton, who's my, he's my guy on the Nats, him and Max. But, uh, but anyway, it was raining the whole time. We had ponchos. It was terrible. I'm going to tell you a little secret. I was vaping the entire time. <laughs> Lisa didn't even know. That's how good I was at it. We were underneath ponchos and it was pouring down rain. So I was just vaping away right there in the stadium. I could have gotten in so much trouble. But anyway, uh, the game was going well. Uh, they were down 4-3. I think it was 4-3. And the bottom of the ninth, and I think it was Howie that came through with a, a, a late run. They tied it up. It went to extra innings. And there was a three-run homer hit right over top of our head for the Nats to lose the game. And that's when we were on TV. <laughs> we were on TV in the 10th inning because a home run went right over top of us, scared Lisa to death, and it landed like two rows behind us. And uh, this kid behind us went and got it, and it was awesome. And um, But, yeah, as soon as that happened, I told Lisa, I said, all right, let's get out of here. And we got out before all the traffic did, so that was a good time. But ended up getting my, uh, my uh, two Juan Soto bobbleheads, which I was really excited about because I'm a huge fan of that guy. Do you just collect Nationals bobbleheads? Well, that's all I have right now. Um, I would definitely collect... 
other team, like other DC sports teams. Like I'd love to have an Alex Ovechkin one. They just gave one out, which I've actually thought about going on eBay to get. They did an Evgeny Kuznetsov bobblehead of him doing the bird. Anybody that knows the Caps knows what I'm talking about. If you're not a fan of the Caps, but you follow hockey, you hate Kuznetsov for that. But um, I'm thinking about going on eBay and buying one of those. Um, but right now, all I have is Nats bobbleheads. And all I collect are the ones that they give away at the stadium. I don't collect any of them. I just collect the ones that they give away. And I showed this one earlier because I told the story behind this one. Uh, that's my one of my three. No, I have two Max Scherzer bobbleheads. I'm getting a third one this year. And I have a Funko Pop from uh, Max Scherzer with the two different colored eyes. And it's adorable. Uh... My partner loves my hobby too. She has yet to make her own tank. Yeah, you know what? I explained this in the aquatic experience, or no, in the members only live stream. The aquatic experience changed everything for Lisa. And that made her definitely, it reinvigorated the hobby for her. Um, of course, she was into fish before then, but, you know, it had faded a little bit. It wasn't as big of a priority for her. Uh, and then we went to the aquatic experience and it just blew up for her. And now she's a maniac and has like so many tanks. She bought another one today. It's a real problem. But uh, but yeah, it's uh, it's awesome. So if you have a partner that's not into the hobby, take them to the aquatic experience. First of all, take them there. Bring them to me. I'll smack them around a little bit. If, if you're a woman and you're going to bring your man, I'll smack your man around a little bit. I'm not going to smack a woman around. I'll smack your man around a little bit. And I'll be like, what's wrong with you? Get into this with her. Don't you know how much fun you can have? Uh, you can go broke like me. And But <clears throat> the aquatic experience will definitely change your partner's outlook on, uh, on fish keeping. I'm 16 and I have a Malawi cichlid breeding business. And I have my own website. Any advice on starting a new business and expanding on YouTube? Oh boy, we could go all day long. Um, I can't do it because I'll be here all night long. There is, There are so many channels out there that are great for the YouTube part of that question. Uh, channels like Daryl Eves. Um, what's that one guy? Daggone it. Let me find out here real quick. Uh, there's one guy, Roberto Blake. I'm sorry. I, I forgot. I didn't have to look it up. I remembered it. Um, Tim Schmoyer, who is uh, video creators. Daryl Eves, Roberto Blake. These are all great channels that will help you grow your YouTube channel. I also like uh, video creators a lot. No, that's not what I meant. Um, Think Media. Uh, video creators too. But Think Media I like a lot. Uh, that guy is really cool. And uh, yeah, watch those channels. Don't take your advice from me. Watch those and you will, uh, you will get what you need for growing your YouTube channel. It's all about the grind. It's all about consistency. And it's all about not expecting to go viral. There's very few people in the fish keeping hobby that go viral on YouTube. You just have to accept that. That is the way it is. Uh, Joey never went viral. Joey's grown steadily, slowly to, to a whole other stratosphere, but it's taken him 10 years to do that. And he's earned every single one of those subscribers. Corey didn't go viral. There's nobody that's gone viral except for maybe Steve Poland. And I don't mean that in a bad way. I mean, he had a video absolutely explode and it's one of the most watched fish keeping videos on YouTube. And it's the whole reason why everybody's talking nonstop about the Ohio fish rescue. Um, but even that Steve was working on that channel five, six years before that happened. So don't expect to blow up overnight. Take your time, give good, consistent content, content that you would like to watch. If you're creating content that you would like to watch, you're going to make good content because you're going to want to make yourself happy. Don't cave to people being negative because take it from me, it's going to happen and it's going to happen a lot, even to the best of them. You could do comment, you could do videos about rainbows and kittens and you're going to get negative comments. So just expect that and uh, 
and there you go. I mean, I, I don't know. It's late, and we're about to wind things down here. Bill G. Bill Gates. Bill Gates is with us. Wow, can I borrow some money, Bill? Good grief. You've already given me $20 tonight, so I guess I shouldn't. <laughs> anyway, and one more question. Do you have concerns about the nicotine in your vape for your aquariums? Asking a fellow cloud chaser, no. I do not, and the reason why is because I've never had any reason to. Um, I don't sit in here all day vaping in here. Uh, when I'm in here, I am doing it. Obviously, you've seen me doing it. Um, but typically, the doors, the, you can't see them, but there's you can see them in the, in the aquarium right there. See right there? Those are double doors that go out into the hallway to the foyer of our house. And those are always open. I never close those because I don't want to be closed in here. Um, so, you know, it, it goes away and it's fine. And plus, vape, it dissipates so quick that it's not an issue. So, no, I don't, I don't have any concerns about that because I've never been given any reason to be concerned about it. I'm not blowing it directly into the tank. So, there you go. Thank you for the $20 tonight. You all have been very generous. All of you have. And I appreciate that very much. I'm going to go ahead and wind things down here, which is a shame because we still got 190 people in here, which is outrageous. I remember doing this before my break. I would be lucky to have like 80 or 90, and now I've gotten, I got 190 in here. It's nuts. Um, somebody said, when when will you be in Jersey? Well, that's going to be for the aquatic experience. It's it's in October. I don't know when it is exactly, um, but uh, but that's when that's when we'll be there. Uh, whenever the aquatic experience is, look it up. That's when we will be there, uh, probably Thursday to Sunday. Because I'm trying to convince Lisa for us to go up a day early and go to the Comedy Cellar in New York uh, Thursday night and hope to run into, like, Chappelle or Seinfeld. or Seinfeld, does, I don't think he goes there anymore, but uh, maybe Jim Norton, Colin Quinn, you know. Maybe run into one of those guys over there. That'd be nice. So anyway, uh, that's when we'll be there. I'm looking forward to it. It's a guarantee we'll be there unless something catastrophic happens between now and then, which I don't see happening. So uh, aquatic experience, it will be a blast. I, uh, how about, I was just about to say, Denny asked uh, Aquashella, Lisa and I both would love to go to Aquashella in Chicago. I don't know that we're going to be able to do it though. Uh, I don't know that there's going to be the funds for that. Uh, it's two of us. It's me taking off work. It's We have five kids here. I mean, it's it's kind of a big thing. Uh, I don't know that we're going to be able to, to make it to Chicago. I mean, it's it's not the kids. It's 100% a money thing. I don't know that we're going to have the money for, for that. So you know what? You want to see us there in Chicago? Start hitting up these companies and saying, hey, KG Tropical's 100,000 subscribers. Pay for him to go to Aquashella. And maybe they'll do it. Maybe they're stupid enough to do something like that. But anyway, I'm kidding. Don't anybody do that because that would just be crazy. Why would you do that? Anyway, thank you all so much. This has been a blast. I have so much fun with this. I'm tired. You can't tell, but I'm tired and I'm ready to go to bed. So I've had a good time tonight. Thank you to everyone that has been in here. It has been a blast. Thank you to the Super Chat people, the new members. Uh, it's an amazing feeling. Anytime anybody would ever take money out of their pocket and for no reason at all, just put it into mine. It's a beautiful thing. Thank you so much for that. Thank you all of you for watching and I will see you next week where I hope to have another good episode of Tank Talk Live for you. You all have a good night.